acids like other macromolecules occupy precise positions in cells and tissues. At the time of extraction, potential information is lost due to homogenization of the molecules. For this reason, techniques have been developed in which nucleic acid probes are used to locate specific nucleic acid sequences in situ, a procedure called in situ hybridization. The basis for detection of specific nucleic acid sequences is the complementary base pairing between the strands of DNA or RNA. At high temperatures, the complementary strands of DNA separate yielding single stranded molecules. The process is known as denaturation. These denatured DNA strands renature or hybridize again by complementary base pairing to form double stranded DNA molecule if incubated under appropriate conditions. This process is called nucleic acid hybridization. Nucleic acid hybrids can be formed between two strands of DNA, RNA or one strand of DNA and one of RNA. Probes are the single stranded DNA, RNA molecules used to detect complementary sequences. These molecules carry radioactive or chemical markers to facilitate their detection and their size varies from 15 to thousands of nucleotides long. Southern blotting is a technique developed by E. M. Southern in 1975. It is widely used for detection of specific genes in a cellular DNA. Southern blotting broadly is the combination of two techniques, firstly the electrophoresis separation of DNA fragments and then they are transferred to a filter membrane where subsequent fragment is detected by probe hybridization. Procedure. Step-by-step -step procedure for the southern blotting technique. The DNA to be analyzed is digested with a restriction endonucleus and the digested DNA fragments are separated by gel electrophoresis. Before transfer on the membrane, DNA is treated with alkali for its denaturation from double-stranded to single-stranded DNA. This process of denaturation may improve binding of the negatively charged DNA to a positively charged membrane or separating it into single DNA strands for later hybridization to the probe and can destroy any residual RNA that may still be present in the DNA. The gel is then overlaid with a nitrocellulose filter or nylon membrane to which the DNA fragments are transferred to yield a replica of the gel. This transfer of DNA to membrane is done by capillary action or maybe by electrotransfer, vacuum transfer or centrifugation. The membrane is then baked in a vacuum or regular oven at 80 degrees Celsius for 2 hours so that the transferred DNA permanently attached to the membrane. For detection of specific DNA sequences, the filter is incubated with radio-labeled probes which hybridizes to the DNA fragments that contain the complementary sequence. After hybridization, excess probe is washed from the membrane and the pattern of hybridization is visualized on X-ray film by autoradiography in the case of radioactive or fluorescent probe or by development of color on the membrane if a chromogenic detection method is used. Applications Southern hybridization can be used to locate the exact position of a cloned gene within a recombinant DNA molecule. Southern blotting permits a comparison between the restriction map of DNA isolated directly from an organism and the restriction map of cloned DNA. This provides a rapid method of comparing the restriction maps of different individual organisms in the region surrounding a clone fragment. Deletion and insertion mutations are readily detected as well as sequence differences in specific restriction sites. If the southern blot contains genomic DNA fragments from the whole genome, the probe will give information about the size of the fragment, the gene is on the genome and how many copies of the gene are present in the genome.
northern blotting is a variation of the southern blotting technique used for detection of RNA instead of DNA. Northern blotting is used to detect a particular RNA in a mixture of RNAs. Similar to the southern blotting technique, here also the first step is total genomic RNAs extraction and separation of RNA on the basis of molecular size by gel electrophoresis. The resolved RNAs are then transferred to a filter membrane where they are detected by hybridization with a specific radioactive probe. Northern blotting is frequently used in studies of gene expression, for example, to determine whether specific mRNAs are present in different types of cells. Procedure in this technique, an RNA sample, often the total cellular RNA, is denatured by treatment with an agent, example, formaldehyde, that prevents hydrogen bonding between base pairs, ensuring that all the RNA molecules have an unfolded linear conformation. The individual RNAs then are separated according to size by gel electrophoresis. After the separation, these RNA molecules are transferred to a nitrocellulose filter to which the extended denatured RNAs adhere. For detection of specific RNA, the filter membrane is exposed to a labeled DNA probe where hybridization takes place. To visualize the hybridized product technique, autoradiography is used. Applications the amount of a specific RNA in a sample can be estimated from a northern blot. To compare the amounts of particular mRNA in cells under different conditions, with northern blotting it is possible to observe cellular control over structure and function by determining the particular gene expression levels during differentiation, morphogenesis as well as abnormal or diseased conditions. To study the expression and function of gene requires the detection not only of DNA and RNA but also of specific proteins. Here for these studies, antibodies instead of nucleic acid probes are used that can selectively react or bind with unique protein molecules. Western blotting is a technique used for the identification of a specific protein in a complex mixture with the help of specific antibodies. Western blotting also called immune blotting because an antibody is used to specifically detect its antigen. This was introduced by Tobin et al. in 1979 and is now a routine technique for protein analysis. Procedure Gel electrophoresis Proteins have different shapes and charges. However, requires a modification of the methods used for electrophoresis of nucleic acids. So, the very first step is to run protein sample on an SDS polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Proteins are separated by a method known as SDS polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis in which they are dissolved in a solution containing the negatively charged detergent sodium dodecyl sulfate. Each protein binds many detergent molecules which denature the protein and give the protein an overall negative charge. Under these conditions, all proteins migrate toward the positive electrode. Their rate of migration depends upon size of protein. Transfer of proteins to a membrane Following electrophoresis, the proteins are transferred to membrane made of nitrocellulose or polyvinylidene difluoride which is then allowed to react with antibodies against the protein of interest. Blotting or more typically electroblotting transfers the resolved proteins on the gel to the surface of a polymer sheet to make them more accessible for reaction. When an electric field is applied, the proteins move out of the polyacrylamide gel and onto the surface of the membrane where the proteins become tightly attached. The result is a membrane with a copy of the protein pattern that was originally in the polyacrylamide gel. Blocking non-specific sites 
After the transfer of the proteins from the gel, the remaining surface of the membrane is blocked to prevent non-specific binding of the detection antibodies during subsequent steps. Blocking of non-specific binding is achieved by placing the membrane in a dilute solution of protein, typically 3 to 5 percent bovine serum albumin. Incubation with antibody after blocking, a dilute solution of primary antibody is incubated with a membrane that is specific for the protein of interest which reacts with the antigen. The antibody solution and the membrane can be sealed and incubated together for anywhere from 30 minutes to overnight. After rinsing the membrane to remove unbound primary antibody, the antibody antigen complex on the sheet can be detected by rinsing the sheet with a second antibody specific for the first example, goat antibody that recognizes mouse antibody. A wide variety of labeled secondary detection reagents can be used for western blot detection. Detection A radioactive label on the second antibody produces a dark band on X-ray film and autoradiogram. Alternatively, an enzyme on the second antibody generates a colored product as in the ELISA method. The antibody bound to the filter can be detected by various methods, thereby identifying the protein against which the antibody is targeted. Applications Western blotting can be used to identify a specific antibody in a mixture. The most widely used application of this procedure is in confirmatory testing for HIV where western blotting is used to determine whether the patient has antibodies that react with one or more viral proteins. A western blot is also used as a definitive test for mad cow disease. Western blot can be used as a confirmatory test for hepatitis B infection. Very small quantities of protein of interest in a cell or in body fluid can be detected. Understanding the role of genes within cells, however, requires analysis of the intracellular organization and expression of individual genes and their encoded proteins. Nucleic acid hybridization provides a means for detecting DNA or RNA sequences that are complementary to an any isolated nucleic acid, such as a viral genome or a clone DNA sequence. The radioactive DNA is used as a prop for hybridization to complementary DNA or RNA sequences which are detected by virtue of the radioactivity of the resulting double-stranded hybrids. Nucleic acid hybridization reactions provide a sensitive way of detecting specific nucleotide sequences. These approaches are important for a wide variety of studies including the mapping of genes to chromosomes, the analysis of gene expression and the localization of proteins to subcellular organelles. Mm -hmm.